Good afternoon there, Slow Life Traders. This is Robert here. Uh, I'm out of my trade for the day already. And so I figured I would talk to you guys today. <clears throat> I went to the State Fair this weekend. We're going to talk about how to be lucky. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, I was very, very, me and the wife, we was very, very lucky this weekend. Some people call it luck. Some people call it a blessing. In this case, I'm going to call it a blessing, okay? We had a very big blessing this weekend. But right now, I'm just going to stick with the theme of luck, just for this video, okay? Anyway, so here we go. How to be lucky with your life, okay? And this also leads to how to be lucky as a day trader. But right now, I'm just gonna talk about in general, how to be lucky, okay? So I got a number of things here that are, that are t topics that are a little, that I'm gonna talk about about it. But while I'm doing it, I'm gonna let you guys just kinda hang with me while I start preparing lunch, okay? Anyway, so, First thing I'm going to say to be lucky is treat other people right, okay? Don't, uh, <laughs> don't, don't be mischievous and, and, and treat people wrong, especially when they don't deserve it, but even sometimes even when they do deserve it. And for some of us, this is harder to do than others, but just treat people right, okay? And this is just like karma. What you throw out comes back to you. So if you treat other people right, maybe you'll get treated better. Okay? And that's number one. Not that I'm keeping these in order, but saying that so I know where I am. Okay. Here's another one. Donate to charity. Ain't nothing wrong with giving to charity, tithing at church. Okay, giving away some of your time. You know, give to charities. If you do it okay, it don't hurt. And I'm gonna tell you something, even when you're not doing the best, it still don't hurt, okay? Give to charities. Okay, here's another one. Don't self-sabotage yourself. Okay, when I was younger, this is something I used to do all the time. <clears throat> You know that you just had a flat on your car. This is, I'm talking to Robert right here. You know you just had a flat on your car. So your spare is sitting on the ground with the other three tires. But you have a tire that's in the trunk that's flat. Don't keep riding around with that tire on flat. You're setting yourself up to have a, a bad day. Cause you know when you're gonna have another flat, when you least need it to happen. So different little things like that, okay? Don't self-sabotage yourself. Uh, don't drive <laughs> faster than the school zone speed limit. You're asking for a ticket. You know the policeman hang out there? Okay, these are little simple ways that you can self-sabotage yourself, okay? It's, it's bigger ways than that. But I'm just naming out some simple ones. Okay, here's another one. Do things the right way. Uh, when I, I was a mechanic, okay? And we got paid on commission. And we would do some of these things called a 30,000 mile check, 60, 60K, 30K, 90K, that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure you guys that own cars have heard of stuff like this, right? Well, you get this whole list of different things to do, but you had some mechanics, they wouldn't even do them. They wouldn't even check them. That'll, keep in mind, some of these things on this list, all you had to do was just check them. Like for instance, check all the lights on the car. They wouldn't even check them. Grease the door hinges and the door latches and the hood latches and the trunk latches. They wouldn't even do this stuff, okay? 
especially if it was close to a new car, they just let it go. Well, that's asking for stuff to come back and bite you. And you're not doing everything that you're supposed to do. So you, in a way, you're setting yourself up for something bad to happen to you. You're not doing stuff right. So when the customer come back and it's not done, of course the boss going to be on you. Why it wasn't done? You're making him look bad. So do the... <laughs> Do things right way. Do things the right way. Okay? <sighs> Here's one. And I kind of covered this a little bit in one of the other ones. Do preventative maintenance. That sets you up to not have bad luck or bad things to happen. If you do preventative maintenance on your car, on your house, or any other kind of mechanical thing that you have, hey, it's just going to be better for you. You have a, a less chance. You reduce the odds of things going bad at the wrong time. Things going to go bad, okay? You can't help that. But you can reduce the odds of things going bad. Especially, for instance, let, let me just give you an example. We was looking at a Toyota Prius, so I started checking stuff out on the internet about the Toyota Prius. They said the number one thing that causes these batteries to go bad is people won't change the filters for the battery. Well, baby, that's routine maintenance. Change your freaking filter, okay? Change your oil in your car. Rotate your tires. Go get your car checked out in your home, okay? If you see something that's that's getting bad, okay, you see, okay, here we go. Your fence is wobbly, okay? You know in the springtime the wind is going to pick up. Fix the fence before that time comes. You got a leaking in your roof. It's just barely leaking. Fix the roof before it mess up other stuff in your house. It can mess up your sheetrock, the boards up in your attic, and then it come on down through your wall. Next thing you know, water is getting into your electricity. Do your preventative maintenance, okay? This will help you have bad luck, uh, help you have good luck. And if it don't help you have good luck, it definitely can keep you from having bad luck. I'm just saying. Okay. Have an emergency fund. Now, this sounds like something that everybody would do, especially once you get past the age of 30. You should know that bad things happen to all of us. It's about what you do or how you have prepared for stuff to happen. If you have an emergency fund set back, you won't even realize that you had bad luck because you got the money put back to take care of the problem, okay? If you get new tires, when the guy tell you that you need new tires, you won't even have to worry about having a flat. You already know you got good tires. Don't mean that good tires can't have a flat, but, the chances of it not happening is a whole lot better when your tires are good than it is when your tires are bad. I'm just saying. Okay. Be thankful. Hey, this may sound like a, a like not like it's nothing, but be thankful. As a kid. If, if your parents do something for you or get you something for Christmas, or you don't even have to be a kid, you can be an adult. If somebody gets you something or do something for you, give them thanks. Let them know you appreciate it, okay? Even if you don't even want it. Because if they see that you don't appreciate that, why in the world would they get you something better? Show some appreciation. And then, hold on, here's another one. Even when nothing ain't happened, Give thanks, okay? If you got a higher power of some sort, and I have a God, tell the Lord thank you sometime, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, now, let me see here. Here's another one. Be a rule follower, okay? If you're not the type of person that don't, wanna, that don't follow the rules, well, you know you're just asking for trouble. You keep doing stuff wrong. You know you're going to get caught eventually on something. Even if nobody else catches you, 
Life will catch up with you. You can't keep doing wrong and expect to get away with it. That's just the way things work. Okay? So, uh, be a rule follower. Follow the freaking rules. You know, you, you know you're breaking the rules. If the speed limit is 65, I know you ain't going to do it 100% of the time, but don't be doing 100, okay? You asking for it. Okay, here's one. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Children, obey your parents. Hey, this, this ain't just for adults. And adults, you can tell your kids this as well. Obey your parents. It's the one promise of the Ten Commandments. By obeying your parents, you're going to live longer. But guess what else is going to happen? If you obey your parents, you're going to bump your head a whole lot less. And you're probably going to get a whole lot less spankings. Okay? Because remember, a hard head does make a soft behind. I'm just saying. Okay, here's another one. Live below your means. Okay. The economy, guys, since the beginning of time, has been having ups and downs, ups and downs. Back in the Bible day, they used to call it feast of famine, okay? You can call it whatever you want to. It's a good economy and a bad economy. If you learn to live below your means, when the bad economy comes, you won't get hurt so bad. Now, people are gonna say, well, you just lucky. And that's fine, let them call you lucky. But you, <laughs> You've done stuff to prepare yourself so that the downtime won't hurt you so bad. You got to be like the ants, okay? The ants work in the summer like it's the winter, but they also work in the winter. They work all the time. They work when times are good. They're not like the grasshopper. The grasshopper just go hopping around like the winter ain't never coming, okay? He ain't worried about storing nothing away or nothing like that. Ants, take an ant mentality. A ant type of uh, work habits. When times are good, they're putting stuff back because they know it's not going to stay that way forever. So live below your means. If you can afford to buy Mercedes, why don't you go buy your Toyota Camry? Fully loaded, an Avalon, okay? Something like that. If you can afford to buy a new car, why don't you get one just a little bit used? It's all kinds of ways, people. I'm just naming up these two. They, they may not work for you, but there are ways that it can work. Guess what else? If you live below your means, people, sometime when you're stressed out on the job, you could take some time off, okay? And you won't have to be going to work so stressed out all the time because you ain't living from can to can. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, Here's another one. Exercise. Go to the doctor and get regular checkups. Now you're like, Robert, what does that have to do with luck? Well, if you have better health, if you're in better shape, maybe you won't fall and break your hip. I'm just saying. If you go get regular checkups, maybe they can find problems before they get too bad. Okay? And men, this is especially for you guys. We hate going to the doctor. I was sick not too long ago, and I didn't want to go to the doctor, okay? But after a week, it's time to go to the doctor. You ain't getting no better. So I went to the doctor. Hey, I don't care how much money you have. If your health ain't no good, baby, it ain't fun, okay? I'm just saying. Uh... Try to eat right and take your vitamins, okay? And this is really good for us older people. I'm not telling you you got to be a vegan and don't eat meat. This is all I'm saying. Eat some fruit. Eat some vegetables. Don't just eat meat all the time. Slack up on some of that bread, okay? Maybe you need to have one helping and not two. I'm just saying. It can't help but help you, Okay? All it can do is help you. You think it's going to hurt you if you miss one meal? I don't think so. So try to have a square meal. Eat all the vegetables. 
Drink more water. Talking to myself on that one. These little things don't seem like much. But over time, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> this is all the stuff that can help you live a, a slow life. Chilling, okay, without stressing. Okay, keeping them bills low. Keeping your health up. Exercising. Taking your vitamins. Going to get your regular checkup. Go to the dentist. You see your teeth are jacked up. Just saying. Anyway, and try to go before you have a toothache. Sometimes we can't help it. Okay, I get that. But uh, uh, I just think real teeth are better than having to have to pull all your teeth out and have fake ones. Now, that's okay if you have to do that. Okay? I'm pretty sure one day I may get to that point. But until that happens, I'm going to try to take care of these parquets as long as I can. Again, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> You're like, Robert, what does this have to do with trading? Well, we're going to get to that. So here's another one. I don't have nothing wrong with you guys going out and having a good time and having a drink or two. I get it, okay? I get it. Just because some of us don't drink don't mean you got to criticize the ones that do drink sometimes. But here's the problem. If you know that you are a heavy drinker, okay, don't get from come out of that place and try to drive home with Ubers now and Lyft and all these kind of things that can take you home. Or if you know that's going to happen, get somebody to go with you that don't drink as much. Let them drive y'all home, okay? You got to be smart, people, okay? We're adults here. Don't do stuff that's, that you know in time. You may not get to this time. But you know if you keep it up, it's going to come back and bite you. And now you got to spend all this money in court, find a lawyer, get yourself out of jail, get your car impounded. And that's if you live, okay? And don't hurt nobody. So take care of it. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know who I'm talking to. Uh, here's one. Don't be a hothead. I know sometimes people can really get you upset, okay? And trust me, <laughs> sometimes you just want to unload on some people, okay? I get it. But here's the deal. This is what my mom used to say. And, you know, y'all hear me say a whole lot of time about uh, what my dad said, what my mom said, and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, they were old school. They had a whole lot of little sayings. Well, one of the sayings that my mom used to say was, bite your tongue and save your face, okay? Long time ago, I used to work at UPS. I asked my boss to go home early, and he let everybody go home early, it seemed like but me. At least that's the way I felt. So eventually, I couldn't take it no more. I unloaded on it. Gave him a piece of my mind, okay? Very uncharacteristic for, of me at that time, but I couldn't help it. I was P.O.'d. So the next day, I was embarrassed to come to work because, I mean, I dumped on him big time. He let me go, but whew, jumped all over it. But if I would have just bit my tongue and held it, don't mean I didn't have to go approach him about it, but I didn't have to jump all over him like I did, Okay. He would have let me go without me getting stupid. I'm pretty sure of it. But I couldn't hold my tongue. And then I had to come in with my head down, not really want to look at him and not really facing him. Knowing I need to apologize, okay? So if you just learn to bite your tongue, you can get to save your face. Because guess what? It probably ain't that bad. I'm just saying. Now, you also ask, what does this have to do with trading, Rob? This is supposed to be a channel on trading. Here's the deal. How to be lucky. In trading, especially in slow life trading, do your homework. Learn how to put these trades on the right way. Learn how to take them off the right way. Okay? 
Be disciplined. When it's time to get out of a trade, get out of a trade. So what if you lose it? If you get out when you're supposed to, you won't be losing that much. Okay? And by doing this, people are going to be saying, man, you sure are lucky. You sure are lucky with them trades. You're not lucky. You just done done your homework and you know what to do. When it's fair day and you know we don't trade on fair days, don't trade. Don't depend on luck for you to win. Okay? We don't depend on luck to win. We depend on the probabilities. We put the odds in our favor. Don't do things that takes the odds out of your favor. It's okay to wait till the next day. Again, I'm just saying. So anyway, I could go on and on about being a lucky trader, but you get the point. In the whole scheme of things, all this is saying is live your life better. And luck will come to you. Now, sometimes luck just comes to you and it has nothing to do on your part. Okay. But, and we can't control them things. But sometimes, the reason why we're having bad luck is because we messed up. We didn't do things right. If it comes time for you to retire and you broke, a guy that I listened to named Jim Rohn, he say, if you broke and you can't retire at the age you want to retire, it's probably because you blew your money and didn't save. Save your 10% like you're supposed to, people. Put the money away in your 401k. Don't just be dependent on Social Security. I promise you it's not going to be enough. Not the way inflation is going up. You think it's going to stop? No, prices are going to get higher. They always do. They always have. That's the way life is. Anyway, guys, didn't mean to holler at you. I'm just trying to get the point across. That's all I have for you today. Until the next time, peace out. And of course, keep it slow.